And we're back with some more Seattle Kraken franchise mode. And in this one, we are going to take care of the draft of year number six. And before we get into it, uh, we have a new ECHL affiliate, and that is the Norfolk Admirals. They were available to select when editing the team, so I figured why not? We may as well have ourselves an ECHL affiliate. So with that, let's advance to the draft lottery. Do we have a lottery pick this year with Philly? Check out Philly's history, their team history, and see where they ended up last year record-wise. Yeah, all right, they were in the playoffs, so... Uh, looks like we'll not be having a lottery pick this year, but still, it'll be good to see the results of the draft lottery. So we did get all of our unsigned prospects signed, well, of the ones that we offered out <laughs> on the last day of June. And here we go, we have the draft lottery. Let's see the results. So at number 16, you have New Jersey. At number 15, Ottawa. 14, Washington. 13 is Detroit. So Carolina moves up into the top three. And uh, as does Dallas, I guess. Huh, interesting. So that means that number 12 would be Arizona. Wow, so are the top three St. Louis, Dallas, and Carolina? That's really unlikely, to say the least. <laughs> wow, so I guess as we advance here, it should be Florida, Calgary, Chicago, Montreal, Boston, Edmonton, Minnesota, San Jose. Yeah, wow. So let's see the order here. Who is at number three? You have Dallas. And who is number one? The Carolina Hurricanes get the first overall pick. That is That was certainly a very unexpected draft lottery there. All right, so we are headed into the draft now of year number six. There is one two-star player available in Maxwell Cotton, but he's only a two-and-a-half-star potential. And uh, there is one five-star goaltender in Sanderson, but... That is about it when it comes to elite potentials. Then you have Cohen, who is only a three and a half star, along with Matthews and Br Brainton. So nothing that's really too attractive here in the top selections of the draft. So I don't really see much reason to move up, honestly. But unfortunately, when it comes to trading Kempe and Wright, we don't really have much of an option. Because remember, in salary, we currently have 92.7 million <laughs> in salary on the team, meaning we have to free up over 10 mil. So we don't really have many options when it comes to trading Kempe and Wright because of that. So we, the best we can do is draft picks, I think, or, or, or prospects at most. So our first pick is at 21. I believe that's our pick, but we have picks at 21 and 27. And once again, there's no one who really stands out to me. So I think we'll pick until human here and just see who is available for us at pick number 21. And it doesn't look like much that I'm interested in, honestly. <laughs> the only one and a half star players are... Also one and a half star potential, so they're not really going to grow much, I wouldn't imagine. And then as we take a look at the best two and a half star players, you have Soderblom as the only skater. Oh man, nope, don't like that. Do not like that. What about Sokolov, the goaltender? Nope, nope. I think we're going to end up trading for a player here. Like a really good prospect who we're not going to have to pay for a little bit. Because we really have no other option. Either that or trade for a draft pick. But once again, there's no one here that I really want. Okay, so I've found a trade here with Dallas for Shane Wright. We are going to be acquiring their first round pick for next year. And the rights to Lubomir Korin. He is a three-star potential with the one-and-a-half star ability. But the important thing for him is... He's actually a really... He's a solid defensive forward by the looks of things. With the 18 defensive read... 14 positioning, 14 stick checking, uh, 13 checking as well. Hitting could use some work, but that's the only thing I'm really concerned about all that much. Determination's good, team player's good, uh, and even his offensive category is decent. So I think he'll honestly be really... I mean, he's listed as an offensive forward, but his defensive category tells a different story, in my opinion. Let's take a look at his career stats here. You have 26 points last year in 37 games in the Slovakian League. 77 grade as well, so he, he has a history of some really good grades here. I mean, obviously that's not at the NHL level, but still, you know, a 77 grade in what I believe is a men's league, that's not bad, especially for, you know, a 20-year-old. And to be able to consistently do that, you know, 75 grade, 66, 66, 68, 80, at 73. And there's no one attribute that really stands stands out like a sore thumb with him. So I really like the look of him, and obviously I'm liking the look of that first round pick. 
And hopefully the draft next year is something better than what we have this year. So Shane Wright to the Dallas Stars for Lubomir Korn and a first round pick off of that trade and finalized. Deal is done. So there you go. Shane Wright now a member of the Dallas Stars. It's a shame that it didn't work out for him here. But you know what? We have several other players that surpassed him on the depth chart and he just wasn't going to get the opportunity in the top six. So I had to move on. So we unfortunately are not going to be able to get much for Kempe. (laughs) The most that I could get out of Boston here is a fifth round pick. And even though he has a two and a half star ability, it makes sense, really. He's He doesn't have a good contract. He hasn't had a good past couple of years, really, when it comes to offense. And we just need to clear up caps. So it, it makes sense that, you know, we're not getting much back from him. And it's, it's unfortunate, but it's the reality of our situation here. So, and we still have to increase our offer a little. Wow, they really... Adrian Kempe is going to be, all right, you know what? I'm going to offer out Kempe and just see what we get for him because manually finding a trade for Kempe appears to not be easy. Okay, so we have six offers, and I'm glad I did that because it looks like we're getting some better offer here than what I was able to do manually. You have a defenseman from Toronto and a fourth. From the Islanders, you have a sixth and another defenseman, but I don't think I'm interested in the players here because it looks like any players that we get, Tony D'Angelo, it looks like any players that we get are going to be mostly either for the AHL or just depth, which I'm not really interested in that unless they're solid defense, like really solid defensively, then I'm, I'm not really interested. I'd rather just go for the later round pick, honestly. Yeah, none of the players are really appealing to me. So let's just take the fourth round pick from Toronto. And, and obviously we get Orban as well, but it doesn't look like he's going to be much at a one or not even a one-star. He has a half-star talent <laughs> with the one-and-a-half-star potential, so complete trade. So with that out of the way, we are now down to a salary cap of 83.5. We still have to make one more trade, it looks like. I think that's going to be Madison Bowie, so we may as well offer out Bowie and see what we can get for him. A lot of offers for Bowie. You have a six from Toronto, and it looks like more or less just depth and late round picks here yeah the only picks that were being offered are six and the only players that were being offered are guys like this artem petrov who has a one who has a half star talent and a half star potential so i'm not really interested in that either so let's just take a draft pick from let's say columbus we have to be careful with what we do for the rest of the offseason it looks like so i think with our first round pick here or one of our first round picks we may as well take soderblom because I mean, there's no one else who's really appealing, and he's the only skater with two and a half star potential, so welcome to the team, Soderblom. And with our next pick, there is only one two and a half star potential left in Bogdan Sokolov, the goaltender, who, uh, once again, nothing too impressive about him. Uh, Let's see his stats. Uh, Nothing too impressive here either, but... I'm just going off potential at this point. So, Sokolov, welcome to Seattle. I gotta say, this draft is really weak. This is probably one of the weakest drafts I've ever seen. (laughs) I mean, this is... Yeah. Nothing that's really standing out to me. The only player who is, I think, acceptable is this guy, Tomas Preble. And that's because he's already a a one-and-a-half star talent, but he also only has a a one-and-a-half star potential, so he's not really going to get much better. But it's not like we really have any other options as far as decent players go who may possibly be ready within the next five years. So, (laughs) Pribble, welcome to Seattle. I hate to keep doing this, but there's really nothing in this draft. So we're just going to do CPU finish draft from here. Because, I mean, once again, as we take a look, there is really nothing that is impressing me here. Yeah, there's nothing. There's there's just absolutely nothing in this draft. So we're, we're just going to auto-simulate the draft here. So now we're going to sign a few of our prospects here. We have Gregory Perry, who's at a two-and-a-half-star ability now. He played in Regina last year. And it looks like he's sort of peaked at the WHL level. I don't think he's really going to get much better. So there's no point in really leaving him down there. I guess we can just... I don't know if he's going to be eligible for the AHL. But if he is, then I want to have him available to send him to the AHL. And if not, that's fine. We could just send him back to the WHL. But I want to have him under contract at the very least. Hanak as well. He is a two-star ability. And looking pretty well-rounded. Uh, don't, I'm not really a fan of that mental category, though. So he's going to have to work on that. But still, he does warrant signing, I believe. And Donovan Lawrence. So he was 
are a really good offensive defenseman prospects. As we see his offensive ratings, 20 offensive read, 18 shooting range, 18 puck handling, 17 passing. I mean, he looks like he could be a potential superstar offensive defenseman if he grows the right way. But he does still have quite a bit of work to do defensively and with the mental categories. So hopefully, I mean, hopefully he pans out because if he does, he looks like he could be a real good force on the back end for getting those points. Because as we take a look at his career history, nothing but point per game seasons. And in several cases, way over point per game, such as this past season with 57 points in 37 games. So really, there's no reason to not sign him. I mean... Even if he doesn't pan out, he can at the very least be, you know, a solid AHL offensive defenseman. I hope that's not what he is. But the way I see it, this is a potential slam dunk, so we have to sign him. And there we go. We have signed all of our prospects, and we are, I think, ready to move into next season. So with that being said, we'll end things off here. Remember to hit like and subscribe, and in the next one, we will start your number seven. See you guys then.